What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we're gonna take a look at this, the High Watt Super High 50. Let's do it. I hope you guys are doing great out there today. My name is Kyle and if this is your first time here at my channel, what I do is I take awesome high gain amplifiers, speakers, cabinets, overdrives, guitars, and pickups. I record them with a simple SM57 setup and I give you the unprocessed audio on your end. So if you're into E-standard thrash riffs, drop C hardcore riffs, and dudes that act like a kid in a candy store when they get to play new amps such as this, you're in the right place. Consider hitting the like button and subscribing so you don't miss anything else. Thanks. Okay guys, so I am super psyched today because uh, this is not an amp that many people have had the opportunity or the pleasure of playing. This is the High Watt Custom Super High 50, formerly known as the Max Watt. This was a collaboration between Fortin and someone else. I forget the backstory to be completely honest, but I know that Mike Fortin uh, basically designed this amp and they were going to produce it under the name Max Watt. They were at Winter Nam a few years ago and it just seemed like they generated a ton of hype and a ton of buzz. I think it was the same year that the MT-15 came out. So 2018, there was a huge thread over at sevenstring.org and a couple other forums kind of going over this amp. And there's a couple of videos, a uh, few people like uh, the man, Jason Frank Hauser, who has an awesome channel, awesome guitar player, an awesome dude all around. He has a video of the Max Watt super high custom super high 50 that's what it's called on his channel too and uh yeah it just sounds really cool from what i understand it is a dr504 which is an older high watt design fortin took it and worked his magic on it and turned it into a super high gain monster which it is it's incredibly saturated it's very cool it's got a bit of a dry feel to it if I'm being 100% honest, I really feel like it reminds me a lot of the VHT Deliverance, which I have sitting over in the corner. The VHT also uh, pulls a lot of design cues from High Watt, as Steve Fryette was a huge fan of High Watt amplifiers and the way that they were built and everything. So I know that he based some of his designs off of a High Watt type base. And I think the Deliverance was one of those, but the Deliverance also has two different gains in its circuit and then it's got your standard EQ. So really the main difference is this does not have a depth control. It just has a separate master, master volume, just has a separate master volume which is foot switchable in case you wanted a, a separate master volume for leads and stuff. We're belligerent amateurs here, so we don't do leads or any of that whittly crap. Anything that actually shows that you know how to play guitar, I'm not your guy. So anyways, I'm gonna stop talking at this point and uh, we're gonna go through this amp a little bit because it's it's my pleasure to have it here on the channel. My man Peacefire ordered it from Guitar Center, shipped it to my house. He has not even had a chance to check it out yet, so we're gonna put everything back to noon. I had an Ibanez TS9 Tube Screamer on in the beginning of the demo. I'm playing my Balaguer Typhon prototype guitar with a Hypernova high output pickups in it. We've got an SM57 on a UK V30 in my Metzabarba 4x12 cab. Excellent cab, super stout, very tight, but big low end. So uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, I'm gonna stop talking. Here's how the amp sounds with the gains at nine and all the EQs at noon. So overall, pretty good. Maybe a little bit tame in the top end, which honestly, the deliverance also was kind of that way. It was tame in the top end until you really started pushing the treble and presence. But bumping the treble and presence just a little bit up to about seven out of 10 and you're, you're already feeling very much more alive and present in the room. 
It has that kind of like sizzly saturation that the VHT Deliverance also has. Overall, it's very reminiscent of that tone. It is, it's, it's pretty similar. This seems like maybe a little bit more open than the Deliverance as the Deliverance is pretty uh, fairly compressed, even though it is a very dry amp, it's not super saturated. This one seems a little bit more saturated right off the bat, but noticing some similarities in the tone and the feel pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and bump both of those gains to 11 o'clock. <laughs> Sounds really good. Real quick, I'm gonna show you gain one and gain two. They both affect different frequencies. So gain one, as you turn that up, it's going to affect your lows and low mids more. It's gonna be more of a, uh, a deep or a guttural type of, uh, it, it shifts the EQ a little bit while also adding more gain. Gain two is more of a high frequency gain. If you guys are familiar with Fortin Designs, any of the Fortin amps, Randall Thrasher, Randall Satan, those all have two different gain controls on them and they affect different frequencies on the amp. So if you want a brighter tone, turn up gain two, turn down gain one. If you want a thicker, darker tone, do the opposite. I literally just had to check and make sure my boost was off because that is so tight the way that it is with no boost that I, uh, I kind of thought I left my tube screamer on. So that's super tight, but yeah, that gives you kind of like a quick overview of how adjusting each gain will affect the overall tone or the overall EQ of the amp. And obviously you can use those to your advantage when you're dialing in a tone to fine tune the EQ and the gain structure depending on what sound you're going for. So that's a nice touch. I really, I like the, the separate gain controls. Every amp that's ever had them, I've always enjoyed that, being able to fine tune things a little bit. So that's cool. So I'm gonna dial the bass up and the mids up. The EQs on this amp also seem really interactive. Like if I have the mids and the treble a little bit higher, it seems to kind of lessen the bass and vice versa. If I turn those down, the bass becomes much more apparent. <laughs> So yeah, that sounds great right there. There's not a lot to adjust on this thing, guys. So I'm gonna grab a guitar with active pickups and a drop C guitar shortly here, but we're gonna play around with the EQ a little bit more before we do that. Let's bump the higher gain up, see if we can get a little bit more saturation without getting muddiness. That's, guys, this amp sounds great on its own. I really, this is one of the first amps in a while where I felt like no boost is necessary to get my preferred level of tightness out of this. This thing sounds really, really good. <laughs> So we've bumped up gain one a little bit to try and add a little bit more saturation and maybe a little bit more low end girth. I'm gonna up the mids to kind of compensate for the low mids that have been added with gain one. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it, it definitely has that kind of sizzly saturation thing going on. It is pretty stiff and pretty dry overall. I would like a little bit more saturation for my personal taste, but honestly, it's not that far off 
from a VHT or the Splon Quick Rod, which is kind of like one of my number one amps. I've told you guys that a lot. It's got a similar feel to that, where you really got to dig in. The dynamics are there, so uh, I'll show you what I mean by dynamics. I have shown in a couple of my older videos on certain amps that the way that you play with your right hand has a huge effect on the way certain amps react. So if you play with a soft right hand on an amp like this, It's gonna sound very different than if you use your right hand to really dig into those strings. Now amps like a 5150 or other very uh, compressed, high gain saturated amps, you won't notice that type of difference on amps like those, but the amps like this where they're more dry, less compressed, it's gonna make a big difference in the sound that you get. So if you have a soft right hand, you're probably not gonna love the way that these amps react. And playing amps like this is really going to force you to strengthen your right hand and dig into the strings more. Rant over on how to play guitar because I barely know what I'm doing myself. Let's try scooping the mids out and seeing how that sounds. We'll scoop them back down to like four out of 10. <laughs> Okay, so uh, it kind of scoops them out, kind of not. Let's scoop the mids out a little bit more. The presence is where the fizziness seems to come from on this amp, I've noticed. It's a very guttural sound. That's, that's pretty cool, actually. That sounds kind of mean. All right, so yeah, pretty fat and kind of scoopy sounding. Let's turn those mids back up. Guys, I'm really digging this amp with no boost in front. It sounds great. I'm gonna turn that gain two up just a little bit more, see if we can get a little more saturation without a boost out front. That's fun. Let's go ahead and turn on that tube screamer again and let's pull that gain tube back a little bit. So that kind of, that, I like how it sounds, but the tube screamer neuters the amp quite a bit. I'm gonna go over here to my mud killer and we're gonna turn that on. And we're gonna turn the fat knob down so it takes out less low end. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm falling in love with this amp. My God, does it sound good. <laughs> it sounds really, really good. Ah, that's a lot of fun. Let's do a little bit less on the low gain.
right, I'm getting carried away. This is a lot of fun. This amp sounds great. All right, guys, Fishman Fluence Modern pickups in the active setting. We have no boosts on. This is straight in front of the amp. All right, so that's a little quacky, a little thin sounding. I've noticed Fishman Moderns don't sound very good in E standard uh, with the active mode engaged. So let's go into their passive voicing. So that sounds pretty good. It's definitely more open and punchy. Let's add some gain on both knobs. Man, that's got such a cool, like, low mid growl thing going on. It just sounds, sounds really pissed off, especially when you're doing the chugs, for sure. All right, so that sounds cool. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and hit a boost. Real quick, I'm just trying to cycle through things. This is the first time, guys, I've ever played through this amp. I have not spent any time with this amp prior to plugging it in for this demo, and I gotta say, I'm having a lot of fun. I think it sounds really good. Yeah, hope you guys are enjoying this. I know I am. This is way too much fun. This sounds really good, guys. I'm really digging this amp a lot. There isn't really much to adjust on here, uh, and honestly, the bass doesn't seem to make a huge difference. The middle and treble are where most of your difference seems to lie. You can add some really top-end presence with the presence knob, but that kind of adds to the fizzy nature of the gain, so I kind of have been really liking keeping that down around noon, but just to show you. <laughs> See how much fizz gets added when you pump that up? Let's put this back to noon. So yeah, I mean, if you pull back the mids, pull back the treble just a little bit, bump the present. Uh, yeah, I really feel like if I were able to get the amp a little bit higher and put it in a band setting that you wouldn't notice that fizziness as much. So keep that in mind. I'm loud in the room, but not quite at uh, metal band volume. So. guys that's gonna do it for me today on the high watt custom super high 50 this thing sounds unreal high watt is known for its its attention to detail and it's it's extremely high build quality they build these in low numbers you don't see them out and around i actually before i made this video i jumped online real quick because i didn't even think that they were making them anymore but it does still show as an active model on their website so you can still custom order these if you like, there's a few used ones on Reverb and stuff for like three grand. If, if the price makes sense to you, that's awesome. I would absolutely love to own one of these because this amp does sound phenomenal. I'm sure it's gonna be built like a tank on the inside if I were to ever pull it apart. I know high watts, especially the old ones, are known for being like works of art inside, like perfect right angles and stuff like, just crazy stuff that my brain can't even fathom. So anyways, what did you think of the amp? Because I absolutely loved it, but I don't want my opinion to sway your guys' opinion. What did you hear on your end that I did not hear? Here in the room, I'm always very curious to see what you guys think about the amps that I demo and hear your feedback if you own or have played this amp. 
and no better ways to set it up than I did. Always drop those comments down in the comment section and I'll be sure to meet you down there to talk about it. If you liked the video, please do me a huge favor, hit that like button and if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button on the way out, hit the bell notification so you always get notified of all my new uploads. If you wanna support the channel, down in the description of this video are my Sweetwater affiliate links, my Patreon. Consider joining my Patreon if you'd like to help me out month to month. I would greatly appreciate it and love you forever. You can also consider becoming a member of the belligerent amateur community by joining my Discord server and my Facebook group. All that stuff is in the description of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun with this one. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time.